Wix Studio, one end-to-end -end web creation platform for your agency to deliver exceptional work with absolute efficiency. The number one long form writer that helps SEOs outrank competition at the click of a button using real time research and NLP. Start ranking content today with contentatscale.ai. So, thank you. Uh, thank you for happy birthday. Um, I know you're all thinking it's 21 <laughs> times <laughs> two. <laughs> and yeah, I had a tough paper round. <laughs> so, a little bit about me. Just, yeah, I'm a technical SEO consultant, but really like why are we here today. Um, this talk should hopefully work for really anyone. It can work for anyone that's like hopefully managing someone or aspires to management, manage someone or if you're like an individual contributor. So yeah, just to get the ball rolling, I'm sure like most of you are kind of aware strategy is an absolute minefield and that's even more apparent like when you're starting out maybe in your first role. It's, it's just so ambiguous in terms of everyone has a different definition of what strategy is, right? Or you go to a different company or a different agency and everyone has their own way of doing it. And just to sort of really compound things, there's just so much jargon. And hopefully today I'm gonna to try and not use jargon, but yeah, we'll see what happens. And just imagine like you, you've also got a big list of tasks, you've got things to do every day. So it's not just as straightforward as someone says, You've got to go and learn this because actually, yeah, you've got a life and you can't always be on. And yeah, there's 35 hours in the week. So it's hard at times to find the time to just take a step back and actually think about actually what you're doing rather than just being on like the hamster wheel. So, and then just to top it off, like your boss turns around and says something like, John, don't think you're strategic. And then they turn around and say like, yeah, so you're not coming to the next month's meeting. Can you just send me some bullet points uh, for the account manager to like regurge back to the client? So that, that is like a real, a real challenge, right? If you get put in that sort of box or that pigeonhole. So hopefully today, today's just really about how to stand out and just Try and like change that perception if you are put there, or if you're in a you know, if you are in a management role, like how to like coach someone out of that and like just do the right thing. So, I'm gonna start off with like my definition of strategic, and again, just to keep it mega simple, strategic is an adjective. That's why I think like why it just like feels like absolute low blow when someone just says those words like you're not strategic or we don't think you're strategic whereas like strategies are noun like that's the thing that you're you're executing ultimately but that strategic just being that label right so just moving on to a bit more detail in like how does that this sort of fit together right imagine you're designing a house this is my house i know what you're thinking there's a, there's a there's a job in graphic design for me when this is done. So you start with the big picture, right? You got an idea, you want, you want, you know how many rooms you want, for example. You might know you want like a massive kitchen with like a big island and one of those massive freezers and things like that. And you might want like a swimming pool and things like that. But you also at the same time have to decide what's possible, right? You're gonna need a roof. You're gonna need some bricks for the walls. And you're gonna need the windows and you're probably going to need a door. So at each level, you have to know the relationship between each component part and how they fit together. And that's essentially what I believe is strategy. And just to sort of, um, like, you move on, you have to start prioritizing what's important, right? So you have to make decisions on what you can do based on, like, your budget or, like, the time or, like, the builders. So you, that prioritization then, like, really constrains then what you have to do. And then you have to like work out the individual details. So you've got like a door, right? I know I, got a, I know I need a door. I know it needs to go on the front of the house. The door might need hinges. It's going to need a lock. And I need to know how it fits to go at that level as well. And then zooming out back to like my original sort of grand design. And then just to complicate things, you've also got to like 
accept that there's things that you might not know will happen in the future, like the builders like, might hit a water main and like, the, you know, the footings will get flooded. So putting that together into like, three sort of rough bullet points and sort of what it is, it's a thoughtful consideration of options with a forward-looking perspective, but that alignment with a bigger plan. So that's my basic strategy, uh, strategic definition. So what can we do? So today, we're going to go through three skill areas. And I've broken each skill area out into four, four behaviors. So that's going to be 12 skills in total to develop, either with your boss, or you can hopefully do this on your own, maybe, because you know, there might be people watching this back that unfortunately aren't in that position. You don't always get the choice of working in like a company that is going to support you that way. So plan to get you moving in the right direction. So you can start off. The first skill area is situational awareness. So hopefully this is the point now where the other speakers talk start sort of filling in a bit more context of what I'm speaking. So just imagine you've been, your first job, you've been dropped in the middle of this map, spun round a dozen times, and then hit on the head with something, right? That's essentially what it's like sometimes when you're starting in your first role or you're in an agency and you've got like a dozen clients and you've got to know all of them inside out in like 10 minutes. That's not easy. So this is where like managers can really help like any new starter get up to speed and give them like set them up for success rather than set people up for failure. So the first skill I'm going to introduce here is business acumen. So business acumen very important and very basic sort of definition here. So this is my interpretation of how you like to perceive this skill as like a coaching point. So it's it's very basic knowing the business and the competition. We've got goals, which is what we're trying to achieve and why. And the why is very important. So rather than just knowing the goal, like hopefully you don't want like we want to rank number one for something, but the why is mega important. We also have internal factors, which is essentially things that we control. You need to know what you control because you can control the controllables. And there are also external factors, things that you don't control, which is basically the competition. It could be Google. It could be uh, our mate Rishi. <laughs> we don't really control what he's doing. And, like, things like inflation. These are all things that could impact what we're trying to do, and we kind of need to be aware of it. And at the same time, we also need to be aware of what we can't do constraints. So we need to be aware of what the constraining factors, right? So that could be things like um, compliance, like a good example there, like when you're doing ideation, there's just certain things you can't necessarily talk about. So the next skill is technical learning, which is very, the most straightforward one here today, because guess what, we're at an SEO conference and everyone's here to acquire new skills and knowledge, right? So you're going to come away with this with like a whole list of things that you want to do, hopefully part of your personal development plan. So that's pretty straightforward, but it, the reality is sometimes you don't always have a personal development plan, which I'll come on to shortly. So and then the next skill area is, is curious, uh, curiosity or being curious. So my way of framing this is just like paying attention or anticipating what will happen if something changes. Like what will happen if a new competitor enters the marketplace, for example. And then we got final skill in the area, we got learning on the fly. So learning on the fly is just learning quickly when facing new problems, because reality is you know, when you're starting your first job, you're going to be doing things for the first time, or there might be just a problem you need to solve by doing something that you haven't done before. And that can be, that can be quite daunting and very basic here, like just using like the Donald Rumsfeld sort of analogy here. There are unknown unknowns, and they're going to come at you. And you're going to have to sort of think and then communicate, like, this is why we've made this choice. This is something we haven't done before, but this is like where we feel like, confident that this is like, the right approach. So that sort of concludes that section. And I appreciate that's like, quite hard if you aren't getting the support you need to sort of go and like, find all those things out. So I've got to sort of cut the tips here that if you are in that situation. So the first thing is, I know it sounds very basic, but note taking. So if you are in that situation, note-taking can make a massive difference. So basic example, just write, you have a notepad, write down every word that you hear for the first time that you don't understand. Or you can do, um, this is actually a great video in terms of like how to do, to do note-taking, which I do feel is like a bit of a lost art. And it also shows your active listening as well when you are taking notes. 
And then next up, if you don't have a PDP, which does happen, we've got, there are resources out there, like, so like the SEO, uh, learning SEO by Alida. So that would be something else that you can also sort of, I would also encourage you to go and like look at as well, and that's maybe for people that are watching this back as well. Um, so next up, next skill area is creating solutions. So here is sort of like dealing with ambiguity. So dealing with ambiguity is sort of making decisions without knowing the full picture, which is kind of what Anna and Thierry both sort of touched upon there, in terms of you just don't know the full picture, right? Your boss isn't telling you everything, your client's not telling you everything, your wife definitely not telling you everything, and your girlfriend. And then it's, there's this sort of thing there on. So if you are in that sort of situation, this is sort of my, my good sort of good sort of go-to book here is how to say anything to anyone. This does give you some very practical tips like of how to approach those situations where you don't have the full picture, but yet you can go and go and like find out this information that you don't have if people aren't necessarily that open to sharing. So innovation, so innovation, my interpretation of this is having good judgment about what opportunities will work rather than just sort of saying, there's this new thing, we've got to do it now. Actually take a step back and actually assess what you can do. So again, my favorite thing to recommend here is the SEO case study database. Now, if you haven't heard of this, it's by a fellow member of the DMU called Adam Gent. So scan the QR code. It's only, it's fairly, I would say, reassuringly expensive, like Stella Artois. And you can go and buy a copy of that and give Adam, give Adam your three-digit CSV, please. So perspective. So perspective is recognizing the relationships between Oh, I should have got to skip the slide, sorry. Perspective, recognizing the relationships between channels and business areas. So we spent quite a bit talking about that and the other speakers. But that really, if we start pulling that together, is if you can understand the relationship between the different channels. So for example, the old classic SEO chat, SEO has gone up loads this month. Then you find out like a PPC of like Pro's band or something. Like, so that happens. But you've got to have that sort of sit, that awareness of what's going on between different channels, business areas, sort of start painting the bigger picture. And then we've got creativity. So creativity is joining the dots to create a harmonious solution. So imagine like the house I had at the start. That's where you take that step back. And that's where you start pulling it together, which is essentially alignment, which is what Thierry spoke about. So, final skill area, you've got making decisions. So, we're coming to decisions, the first thing is dealing with paradox, which, as soon as you're aware of this concept, you'll start seeing it everywhere. So, the first example is, what works for client X may not work for client Y. What works for sector X may not work for sector Y. And what worked six months ago may not work today. And I think you'll come across that quite a bit time to time particularly from uh, like your business development people that just say, yeah, we're going to do the same shit for different people. So instead of like when people do ask, like, and your intuition is to say, it depends, instead of saying it depends, a good way of reframing it is yes, if. So get away from that sort of it depends and then actually give hopefully a, like a bit more grounded answer. So then the next up, we got problem solving. So problem solving is a finding effective uh, Finding effective solutions. So here's just be known for recommending things that you can execute on, because that will sort of, I think, definitely help sort of build up that sort of gravitas you have with your peers. Um, and if you are stuck for problem solving, one of my great book I would recommend here is Pig Wrestling, uh, because basically the premise is if you wrestle a pig, two things happen. You both get covered in poo, and the pig likes it. It's actually a really good book, and it's easy to read. And we've got prioritization. So here is prioritization is understanding what initiatives are going to make the most impact. And we've got agility, which is anticipating future, future trends and their impact, which is a lot of that's going on. So we've got people talking about the impact of AI, content, a lot of that going on over the next two days. So I won't labor that point. But these are essentially known unknowns, right? So you've got to know what the known unknowns are in What's going on? So that concludes the skills. So we've got 12 skills in there, 12 skills in total across three skill areas. So what we're going to do now is turn this into a plan.
the first thing is like, where do you start? So my recommendation, pick a behavior you're untested on, because reality is, there might be things you haven't done before, and that's OK. Or a behavior you know, hey, I want to prove this. So create a metrics. Here's my metrics. It's using emojis. But you can use actually write this down in a bit more detail. So here's my, I think I'm doing all right, technical learning, business acumen, yeah, terrible, needs a bit of work. Once you've done that, let's seek, seek some feedback. Now, feedback, three types of feedback. Where you stand, John, you can't do strategy, ace. Appreciation, thought you're doing really good. And actually, what I want at that moment in time is coaching. So with the three different co feedback types, it's important that you give the right feedback at the right moment. So after this talk, all I'm going to want is appreciation. No coaching, please. <laughs> and if you are a boss or a manager doing this, situation behavior impact framework. Best way of doing it, because it removes any sort of um, like, yeah, feelings. Sorry. It's actually based on fact rather than like opinion. So describe a specific situation. Describe the actual observable behavior, and describe the impact of the behavior. Nice. Or if you haven't got, yeah, you know, if you haven't got that psychological safety to approach your boss, go to a friend, and just say, "I think I'm doing X. Do you agree?" And then you can repeat that process to get a 360 view. You can go to people above you in the organization, maybe people below you, different part, uh, different departments, but try and get, if you can, get that bigger picture either using I think I'm doing X, or situation behavior impact. So what you'll have now is hopefully a better picture of actually where you stand. So yeah, I thought I was doing really well at technical learning. It turns out that I'm just talking too much <laughs> crap at times. So that's actually, this is a concept of like an overused skill, which then acts as the detriment of others, which I think is a bit of a trap with like the technical SEO. So be aware that you can overuse a skill, and then actually there might be skills that you thought you're doing really bad, and actually your, your, your peers and colleagues actually think, yeah, you're doing really well in that area. So then you'll have basically a better idea of what you want to do. And then finally, you can pick the behavior you want to focus on. So it's going to be the, the behavior you're untested on, a behavior you want to strengthen, or a behavior you're over, overusing. And now we're going to pick a development assignment. Ah, brilliant. <laughs> so, with the development assignment, um, has anyone read the book Atomic Habits? So the book Atomic Habits is like really, like the, the concept there is like uh, stacking habits or looking for triggers or cues to do something. So here you can look for behavioral cues or things, right? So like I remember like when I was like an SEO exec, things that used to freak me out, the managing director emailing me. <laughs> it used to like freak me out. So I would use something like that as a cue to say, right, when that happens, I'm going to develop an action plan to actually put some steps in place. This is what I'm going to do when it happens. I'm not going to bury my head in the sand. I'm going to do this. I'm going to put, like, put a meeting in the diary. Well, there's a core algorithm update. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait four days to search console data to come in. I'm going to put a meeting in the diary next week. And I'm actually then going to start analyzing some data to draw some firm conclusions rather than just sort of putting out a LinkedIn post saying, <laughs> within 10 minutes, here's what you can do if you've been hit by this month's core algorithm update. So, just use something like this. So when X happens, I'm going to demonstrate why by doing Z. But try and be realistic at the same time. So Rome wasn't built in a day, and it does take time to sort of like pull these things together. So be realistic. Don't be hard on yourself. Reflect. To take time to actually six months' time, 12 months' time, actually take a step back and actually like observe the progress you've made. And like yeah, celebrate the moments, celebrate the wins. And Repeat, and most of all, just go for it. And just like, if you are in that situation, this, this talk was um, inspired by a, a Reach. We spoke at the last keynote and said people didn't view, view you as strategic. And it just goes to show, you know, Reach is one of the most talented, strategic people I know. And it can show that you can grow and change over time and acquire new skills and actually, yeah, show people that you are strategic. So thank you very much. Here's the link to the slides if you want them. Thank you. Monthly reporting making you want to shove sharp things up your nose? Try Dragon Metrics, the all-in-one SEO software with mind-blowing reporting tools.